as you have come here together, amen. It's good to see each and every one of you that is here today. It truly is a blessing to be here, amen. God has woke us up, yet he breathed on us so we could see another day. Don't take that lightly because somebody didn't wake up this morning, amen. Somebody did not wake up this morning. And we want to make sure we tell the Lord thank you for the small things that's so big to us. Life is big when you are able to see it. You're able to see things, touch, smell, and taste. We want to make sure we give God his thanks for everything he does. He said in all, give thanks. Amen. 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 It's a beautiful day. We're going to make sure we are rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let us go before the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see yet another day. Thank you, Lord, for breathing on us one more time and raising up up out of the bed. And, Lord, allowing the activity of our limbs to work as they normally work, letting us be able to see, touch, hear, smell, and taste, Lord. And we don't want to take anything lightly. Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for how you have watched over us and gave us a good night rest. Lord, how you have kept our family safe. Lord, how you allowed us to get here and gave us traveling mercy as we got here safely, Lord. We don't want to overlook these things, Lord. We want to say thank you because somebody didn't make it this morning. And for those who are in bereavement, Lord, we want you to, Lord, help them, Lord. Comfort them in their times of bereavement. And those who are here, Lord, we want to say thank you for allowing us to be able to be together one more time to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross so that we might have life, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for how your son came and showed us the way and the ways in which we did not know. But, Lord, you opened up and showed us that he is the way, the truth, and the light, Lord. Thank you for how you have forgiven us for our sins. Lord, thank you for how you have molded us day by day. And Lord, as we come before you now with presence and thanksgiving, Lord, we ask that you continually mold us and help us in the way that we need to go. And I, as your manservant, come, Lord, that it be none of Larry Simmons Jr. that speaks today, but it be all of you. Let me not add to or take from this word in which you have put in my heart, and let those ears that are here to hear, let them be able to hear this word and receive it in the manner in which you have given it to me. Lord, we love you, and we can't say we thank you enough for all that you do. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 God is good. And I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying reading his word. I'm enjoying studying his word. I see now what all the older people was talking about when I was younger. It's joy when you read this word. It's food. It's nurturing when you get into his word. Amen? All right. You got to know it. If you read it and you have a relationship with Jesus, then you know when you finish reading and you sit back and you catch them old people sitting back kicking their feet in the wind under a tree, they always tell you they're getting a peace of mind. We didn't know then what that peace of mind was, but they are sitting back thinking on the goodness of the Lord and how he has brought us so far. Amen. I got a good word for you today. I got a good word for you today. I ain't going to say none of the rest of the words was bad, but this one kind of meditated in my spirit a little bit. It took me back in history. It took me back on how we were raised and the things we need to remember. Amen. We, we need to remember a lot of things. 
We're going to go to the Gospel of John, and we're going to look at John 18th chapter, as we are still reflecting on the resurrection. Even though it was last week, we want to still give reference to what Jesus did. Amen. John 18 chapter, I'm going to come out of the King James Version. We're going to look at the 19th verse. Amen. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret I have said nothing. 21st verse, why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they should know what I said. And when he said thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou in the highest priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of evil, but if well, why smittest thou me? Final verse, And Annas had sent him bound to Cephas, the high priest. Amen to the word of God. Jesus now arrested let me back up. First off, I want to give an honor to God for allowing me to be here. And to our pastor, Pastor Larry Simmons Sr. of Shallow Baptist Church. Can we give him a couple of hugs? Pastor, First Lady, Mother of the Church, all of you who are here today. Thank you. Jesus now arrested, as we know, and he's headed to the high priest for questioning. Why do they question Jesus? Why do they question Jesus? Here you might get a more of an understanding if you read the NIV version to give you a clearer understanding that they are questioning Jesus right now. As they are questioning him, think of how many times you've been questioned, how, how many times you've been under pressure, how many times people have pulled you in a corner and cornered you and asked you questions. Do they not already know or heard him speak? They have heard him speak before. Have they not heard what they have said about Jesus? Do they ask for clarification or do they ask just for instigation? You got to understand, we're going to speak on a topic today. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. We've heard this over and over and over again, but what does it truly mean if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Jesus said, I have spoken these words openly to the world. And as I have spoken them openly to the world, have I done nothing wrong? Has he not said anything untrue? But yet they question him in hopes to trip him up. We refer to this method better today as incriminate. And what is incriminate as we look into Google? What is incriminate? We all might know, but some of us may not know. It says to make someone appear guilty of a crime or wrongdoing, strongly imply the guilt of someone. And we know as we live today, we have been living where we have seen times where you will have to make a stand. How many people out here have hated had to make a stand at some point in your life. You had to stand for something. You have to make a stand. And don't you know if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. And as you made that stand in your life, God will stand with you if you reference him. But those who are opposing you, they will talk to you like you are stupid make you look like you boo-boo the fool, twist your words to confuse you to make you break. They want you to break into pieces so they can make a spectacle out of you. And only people who know what I'm talking about can relate to what I'm saying. 
Because you will be standing before the world sometimes and they will try to discredit you. They will try to make you look like you are nothing just to make themselves look good. Do anybody know what I'm talking about are you? 21st verse, Jesus said, why are you asking me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. Don't you know somebody's always watching? I don't care what you do in this world. Everywhere you go, somebody's always watching. There's always a witness. But if the person asking isn't looking for validation, only criminalization, they won't look elsewhere without trying to see what you are made of. Some might try intimidation. Verse 22, it says, when Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in his face. Is this the way you answer a high priest? I want y'all to follow this story. He slapped Jesus in the face and asked him, is this the way you answer a high priest? He demanded, you see, what you don't understand is what our Lord and Savior went through for us, for you. Standing up for us when majority of the people were against him. I want you to see just a little bit of this humiliation he endured on the behalf of us. Some humiliation that a lot of us, we have to look at and learn from. Now let's be realistic for a minute. I want to be realistic for a minute. I want you to look into your carnal mind and I want you to be real with yourself. In my mind, I could be wrong. They help me if I'm wrong. But if somebody slapped you in your face right now, the majority of us would retaliate. Come on now, come on now, come on now. My first message was under construction. Praise God. I'm still under construction. I might be with y'all. I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. That's one of the things I'm still working on. But if majority of us would have slapped in our face, we would retaliate, but three out of five percent of us would say, what did I do? You, we all heard somebody, we all got one in the crowd that'll take a hit for the team and say, well, what did I do? Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with them, ain't nothing wrong with them. But we got very few that will carry on like nothing even happened. Come on now, very few people would turn that cheek and continue on like nothing ever happened. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Verse 23, if I've said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what I said wrong. What is wrong? But if I spoke the truth, why do you strike me? You see, first you might be incriminated, then you may be violated, and if all else fail, you will be intimidated. Let me say that again. Let me slow it down for you. First, you may be incriminated. Then, you may be violated. And if all else fails, you will be intimidated. You look at the things going on today. Look at how our men are going through so much. And what do they endure while they're on the street and they are being apprehended? Intimidation. What are you talking about, preacher? What if Jesus would have stuttered? And I'm not saying this to be little. Anybody who stutter or make uh, uh, any type of uh, speculations, I'm saying when you stutter, sometimes you lying to somebody who don't have a speech impediment. You get to stuttering. What if Jesus folded? What if he fell back? What if he got scared? What if he denied everything and just said, man, forget it? What if he retaliated and fought back because he tells us, that he could have bought legions upon anybody he wanted when he needed to. Matthew 26 and 53, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. So it's not like he couldn't have got out of it or just said, Lord, take them all away. But guess what he did? He stood up, and he did this for a reason. And as I keep on going, I'll tell you, if he would have retaliated, fought back, or fell victim to the fleshly temptation, what would have happened to the mission? Remember why you stand. Remember why you change. 
Remember that there's always a trap to compromise your integrity. What if you fall victim? You could set yourself back a few years from your whole mission. You could jeopardize everything. Amen? If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Everybody here has a mission. Amen? God has put you on a mission. God has a particular mission for you. Not for me, for you, but for you, for you. Amen? He will find somebody else to do the job, but he has something specifically for you to do. Verse 11 in this same chapter, Peter has struck the centurion, and Jesus said, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? The cup refers to Jesus' suffering and death that he would experience under God's wrath against sin. Find that in Psalm 75 and 8, Isaiah 51 and 17. Jesus saw these things as God's plan and he must embrace it. As your plan, you see it, you start evolving. If you don't know what your plan is, ask God, what is my plan? What is my purpose? Why am I here? What do you want me to do? And once he reveals it to you, then you start your walk. And as you start your walk, things will come in your way. You got to learn how to not push them to the side. You can walk around them, amen? You got to learn how to tell people, get back, Satan. You got to learn how to control your attitude and your emotions. You have to learn how to stand down, amen? We have to learn how to control ourselves because if not, we could jeopardize everything. What are you saying, preacher? Make it plain. I must endure intimidation, violation, criminalization for the vindication of his people. Jesus knows the mission and how it must be achieved. But do you know your mission? The mission is your purpose. Can you handle the pressure? Can you carry your cross? When you feel like breaking, when you feel like it's too much, when you feel like giving up, I want you to remember Matthew 11 chapter 28 through 30. Come, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take up your cross and follow Jesus. Put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6 to 18, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now I say this every week. I'm going to say it every time I see you. I'm going to say it until it sink in. Because a lot of times we sit there and we say, I don't know why they acted like that. I don't know why I got to go through this. I don't know why they did this to me. You know why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When we understand that the reason why we go through things and why things happen to us is not of that person, but the spirit in them. Understand? You have to understand we are going against spirits. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness. We have rulers of darkness you are against. That's why we have to stay prayed up because we can't fight nothing you can't see. I mean, maybe there's somebody out here that can. I'll be, I, I, I'm willing to listen to you, but you can't fight an enemy you can't see. That's why we gotta stay prayed up. And as I say, the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness of high places. Wherefore, taking to you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having do all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about you, the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of grace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take your helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Stand even when you're tired. Stand even when you're frustrated. Stand even when you're alone. Stand when the world is up against you, because God has plans for you. 
Jeremiah 29, 11, and not to harm you. Plans for hope and a future. Matthew 20 to 20, he says, and lo, I am with you always even until the end of the world. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Know that when you take up your cross, the world is going to hate you. Not because they hate you, but they hate God. You represent the body of Christ. So they are not going to accept you. Amen? Verse 25, for whoever will save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And remember the mission. Remember who saved you. Remember who loved you. Remember what he endured so we could be free. Remember what he endured so we could be free. Remember the humiliation he went through. Remember all of the times that people threw things at him and said things to him and rejected him, but yet he still laid his life on the cross for us. In closing, Ephesians 2, 20 through 22, remember this? Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, we know this building, every building has one, it's a foundation. Every foundation has a cornerstone. And in our cornerstone, Christ Jesus is our cornerstone. Amen? In whom the whole building being fitted together, we are the building, we are being fitted together, is growing into the holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. God is working on you every day. Jesus Christ is your cornerstone. We have to remember what we stand on. Remember why you are here. Remember why you are doing your purpose. Remember why you have to endure these things. Because if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Feel that foundation beneath your feet so when you stand, know if God be for us, who? will be against us. Remind yourself, if you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything, but what if Martin Luther King didn't stand for nothing? What if Muhammad Ali stand for nothing? What if Jackie Robinson was to stand for nothing? Langston Hughes, Maya Angelou, what about your grandparents? What about your great-grandparents? What about your parents today? This is the history we all are aware of, but we rarely give reference to our own parents or grandparents because they too was a model citizen and they stood for something. People say all oh, they want to say about, oh, I would have done, oh, you wouldn't have done nothing. You would have done the same thing they did. You never know what you're doing to you in that situation. It's easy for somebody in the background to say what you would have done, you wouldn't have done nothing. Tell the truth, you shame the devil. Everybody think you cut out of that cloth. You're not cut out the same cloth. Everybody's not cut out the same cloth. Everybody's not designed to be a leader. Everybody's not designed to be a killer. Everybody's not designed to be a fighter. It's everybody in every category. You have to follow your category. You may not be that one that would have stood tall and said, uh uh, I'm not doing it today. You ain't got it in you. But you got it in you to tell the Lord thank you. And the same, you gotta need you to be thankful for those who did do it for us. Because they stood for something. They stood on it. They believed in it. And look what we got today through our Christ Savior, Jesus Christ. He gave us people to stand for what they believed in. Look at you here, free. Aren't you free? You was first free through Christ Jesus, amen? Free from sin, free from the slave of sin. And then we got out of slavery. That's deep. Because I was looking at a movie last night, and y'all look at it, 24. It's called a 24. And these men stood and they believed 
that they were men. They believed that they were men and they wanted to be treated as men. One man said, and I had to quote, if you die fighting for justice, you never really die. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. If you die fighting for justice, you never really die. What does that mean? Look at your history books. Don't you still see the people who did something? How long did they go? Their legacy lives on forever because they died for something. When we look at this Bible, who do you read about that died for our sin? They never really died to live forever in Jesus Christ, those who have been his children. And as we are coming to an end, I want you to remember and be encouraged, whether you're at your job, whether you are at home, whether you are at church with your friends. You may be discussing some, some things. You may be asking them for some answers that they can give you. Because it's your mission. It's only meant for you to understand. It's only meant for you. Remember that you have a purpose and a mission that you need to complete. I want you to complete that mission with honors, with stripes. Just don't, I, I made it. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Because our God has been too good to us. We're going to walk out, we're going to have back up straight, and we're going to walk with some confidence. The Lord, I did it. I thank you, Lord, for giving me that mission, because you could have gave it to anybody else, but you didn't. You didn't give me that mission, and with you giving me that mission, I completed it, and I hope that it's pleasing to you. Amen? May our mission be pleasing to God. May our mission be be pleasing to God. May the mission be pleasing to God. Amen. I want y'all to listen to this song. The Lord put it in my heart last night. I said, Lord, what a beautiful song to add at the end. Go ahead, give me some weight, brother. This is what he did for you. I'm so glad. Ain't you glad about it?
the passage that he prayed before he gave his life up. He gave three prayers. He gave one to glorify the Father. He gave the second one for his disciples. And the third one he gave for all the believers. I want to read you the words of Jesus before he went up. John 17. Praise for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, Father. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew of certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world. I want you to remember, I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, but they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and the glory has come to me through him. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have a full measure of joy within them. I have given them your word, and your world has hated them, for they are not of the world, and more than I am in the world, any more than I am in the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of this world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be sanctified. And all of God's children say, Amen. Say amen again. Amen, amen. What a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. If you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Amen. We give God praise and glory. Let's give him some thanks for he is worthy to be praised. Uh, God knew how to do things, don't he? Let us Minister Simmons Jr., amen, uh, letting God use him today. Good job, uh, Minister. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for, for using you to speak to our hearts, uh, amen, uh, concerning the cross and what Jesus has done for us. And yet still doing, look at him, look, look, look at the Lord. <laughs> He's still shining on us when, when they said, uh, my wife said, they said it's going to rain. But God said, I'm going to shine on you. 
Hallelujah. He let his sun shine on us so that we can have a great time. Uh, he brought a wonderful word. Talked about incrimination. Have you ever been made to feel incriminated? I was, I was watching the, the, the latest thing on the news where the young uh, second lieutenant, uh, they pulled him over in Windsor, Virginia, right here in our town. Now we used to watch the news about things afar off, but this happened right under our nose. And it could happen to you. Could happen to you. You ever felt incriminated? The young man kept saying, what's wrong? What's, what's going on here? And Jesus, they struck him in his face, spit on him. And like you and I would have probably retaliated differently. But Jesus, he's not a weak. He's not a weakling. He stood there and spoke to him like the God that he is. That's why I praise him today. I praise him today. And he uh, went on to tell us that we need to learn how to control ourselves. I, I, I'm guilty. I, I'm guilty. What about you? If somebody strike you in your face, what you can do? You got to call on who? Call on Jesus. Because you ain't able to act right in your own self. Learning how to control your attitude. Uh, I call it work in progress. That's what we used to call it. I'm, I'm not going to preach you after your son. You've done a great job. Let me go down here and give. Uh, I want to say thanks to Brad Edward for a beautiful job with the music also. He worked along with the preacher today, as he always does. And I want to say to you all, Mother Mary, I talked to her the other day. Talked to her the other day. We call her Shouting John. Here she says, Shallow Baptist Church family. And uh, she said, you're sweet and kind and true. I wanted you to know that I'm thinking of you. Love, Mother Mary, it was, it was warm. Amen. And she also sent a check for $50. God bless her. I talked to her the other day and she, I said, I feel bad because you called me. She said, that's all right, Pastor. I understand. I love you. And that's how she is. And those of us that we thank God for her and, and God has blessed Mother Mary, we call her Shouting John. I have a Amen. Thank you so much. I also have a thank you card from, from the family of Miss Virginia Haskin. I was able to go and be there. We read a thank you from Adrian uh, Carrier's family last week, and we thank them and, and the love that they've shown back to us. We tried to follow and be present. And Minister Junior, he's, he's, he's working, but I'm retired, amen? And so I can freely do these things when it's permissible. And so here, uh, Mary Virginia uh, family said, there are no adequate amount of words that could equal the generosity you showed us during our time of bereavement of our mother and grandmother, your friendship, is highly appreciated. Thank you so very much, the Virginia Haskin Edmonds family, uh, children Jeanette, Charles, Anthony, Michael, and Jeanette. God bless. Thank you. And that's just remember as we leave, let the cross continue to preach to you. You know, 
and let the cross continue to preach to you. Just remember that we can now say, as Hebrews 12, 2 tells us to do, looking unto Jesus. Uh, you remember David in his daytime said, I'm looking to the hills, but now we can say, I'm looking to Jesus who has been crucified, but he redeemed us our sins on the cross. So look to the cross and give thanks. But give thanks to Jesus in your everyday walk and prayers. God bless you. Certainly we want to uh, acknowledge uh, all the officials here, acknowledging Minister Simmons. I see Minister Clark and, and Minister Wilson to the official board. It's good to see y'all looking good out there today. Uh, we're certainly thankful for you, all of you that showed up today. Keep showing up to uh, Sister Julia, First Lady. Amen. Keep her in your prayers. Mother, you're looking good over there. Amen. Of the church. Amen. Good to see those that come with us every Sunday. They may not be members, but uh, we, we consider you members, Sister Gracie. And my, uh, Mother Mary, amen. And all of you that didn't call your name, we acknowledge you. We thank God that you are here. Amen. Giving it back over to Minister Simmons now. Continue to enjoy your day. Be with the family. Show some love to one another. When we think about what COVID has done to us, COVID-19 has done to us in 2020, and still, we look at it as a defeated force. We, we have the victory now. We're declaring it. But it took with him, it took with it over a half a million people. Some of them was our loved ones. We can't tell them that we still love them face to face. And you know what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you get a chance to show kindness and love to your loved ones, do it while you have a chance. God bless. Heaven bless you. Smile on you. Bless you, bless you, bless you, Pastor, for those remarks. Thank you for all those who have done that due diligence. Thank you for all of those who are here once again. We did not open the doors of the church, uh, unbeknownst to me. If there is anybody who does not know the Lord today, will you come? If there's anybody who is in need of prayer, honk your horn. Amen, amen. As we are coming to a close, we're going to make sure we keep each and every one of you in prayer. Let us go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the word in which you have given us today, that it has fell on our ears, Lord, that they may receive this word in the manner in which you have given it to me, Lord. Thank you for how this word has been implemented in our hearts, and we thank you, Lord, for how you continue to mold us and show us the way, Lord. Help us to remember why we stand, and Lord, help us not to fall for anything. Thank you, Lord, for how you continue to love us daily and how you show us how to love daily. Thank you, Lord, for the travel and mercy of which you give us as we go to and from our various destinations. And, Lord, as we go to our loved ones, may they be able to receive the same gifts that you have given us. Now, Lord, as we are praying, we ask special prayer for those who are in need of prayer. Lord, I am standing as an intercessor for those who are in need of prayer. Lord, you know who they are. All those who have asked for prayer, may they receive the words and the blessings in which you have given them. And, Lord, those who are not here or are not able to be here, Lord, may somebody be sent there. May the comforter continue to comfort them. Lord, as we go throughout this day, help us to continue to love and show you love. And not only today, tomorrow, and forever. And Lord, as we are coming to the end of this prayer, Lord, but never away from your anointing, we ask that you continually keep us. And Lord, help us to do better. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name, let us pray for this offering. Lord, this offering that you have given and those that have given, Lord, may it be used to your blessings that it may be used for the things in which you need them to be. Lord, those who have given, bless those hearts of those who have given, and those who had the mind to give, bless those also. 
May these funds be used in a way in which in the manner in which you said them to be. This is our prayer. Jesus, wonderful name, we pray and all the church say, Amen, Amen, and Amen.